It's one in the morning. That means it's time once again for A Couple of Cold Ones with Corey and Carlisle. Now, see, you always jumped on me about saying time. You always jumped on me about doing and that. And I decided to do <laughs> it like, just this once. Why well, this once? Because I am like that. I am a being of chaos. Okay. Because sometimes I decide to do things because I get a wild hair growing up my ass. That's oh, why. Man. I don't want to you know just about your said hairs. Like three seconds. Ago, okay, it's one a.m. So we'll start. And I just I felt like it. I mean, you even you were watching me. I had my hand up to my ear, and I'm like, it's one a.m. <laughs> but you know, I I'm just you know saying. Your children are. I can't tell you how many Corey times has. you've been like. Don't say time. And I'm like, man, okay, now I made it, make an effort not to do it, and your little wild hair up your ass makes you do it. Well, now the thing is, is now you've got the system worked out to where if we do these right, you've got it up before I get home. Yeah, you no, know, I'm I quick drive these home days. And I live like 10 minutes away, and I get home, and there's already comments on the motherfucker. Um, yeah, that yeah. is, you know, okay, it's fine if I mention time because people are like, oh, this just happened. Like, <laughs> Two hours ago. That's awesome. Damn. Is that what's sticking out your jeans pants? Uh, uh, that hair? I thought that, you had a tail at first. <laughs> it is a it long looks, hair. It right looks braided. <laughs> With a little well, bow at the end. It's a Willie Nelson hair. <laughs> <laughs> you got a ponytail <laughs> coming out your ass. All right. So, well, this is going to be an, an interesting and I think fun week to do the show, man, because there's a, a, a the dark night g- gives us plenty of shit to well, talk about. You know what? I don't think we should talk about Batman anymore. I think it's over. It's done with. Nobody's interested in you, Batman. Okay. I think the box office this weekend shows us that no Nobody gives a shit about Batman. I'm about to so, say, you so let's go and mind. talk about the movies people really like. Like Mamma Mia. And, and start with the top five. Okay, let's start with number five. Number five. Damn, that's soul right there. You know how I always tell you you ain't got soul? That, I don't know where you pulled that up from. You must have been tucking on that hair back there. Five! That's my black mom. <laughs> <laughs> TV show, not the <laughs> no, Was that an actual TV show? My black mama? You never know. I'm kidding. Yeah. I know that's not. <laughs> I wish there was. I remember Don't that. Make that me was, break my foot off in your ass. <laughs> I remember that there was. That's my mama, yeah. and she was black. I thought maybe the working title was "That's my Black Mama." My, then there's my mother, the car. No, that was a real that show. Was a that real was a show. that was a pilot. Oh my yeah. God, what a magic. But none of that has to do with the top five. Even number though the way remakes five. are going, they might make them. That's my mother, the car movie one day. But number five is Hellboy. To the Golden Army. Yeah, I don't. You know what? I don't know how I feel about Hellboy Two. Uh, sitting here in my Hellboy shirt right now, dude. This movie's awesome and it deserves it. It uh... well, it deserves it, buddy. I'm look. I'm not even saying this because I'm not bringing my bias into this. I never do, but it fell off pretty fast. It <laughs> fell off to number five. I'm just saying. It I, did. No, yeah. it, it totally did. It, it. 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 It's that was. It was one of those niche comic things. It's done really well, but it hasn't done you know gangbuster blockbuster numbers. It's just funny because. Last week, it was number one, and Journey to the Center of the Earth was number three. It actually fell below number four. Which is Journey to the Center of the Earth. You got to sing it, man. Come on now. Number four. I got your eyes closed and everything. Look at you. Making love to the microphone. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Hellboy made uh, $10 million last week. Uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth made $11 million this week. Now, there's a really good reason for this. Why? Well, let's see. If you were going to go see a comic book movie this weekend, what were you going to go see? Were you uh, going to go see? I, I I talked to like several of my friends emailed me. They're like, oh, hey, oh, I got to run. I got to run and see Hellboy. And I'm like, why are you going to see Hellboy this weekend? It's like, not that I have anything against Hellboy, but of all weekends to see a comic book movie. I know. Yeah, gonna... you, when you could go see The Incredible Hulk. I mean, it's still there. Why That's would you right. go see? Yeah. Why I would mean... you? Or or that that's crazy. I'm sure something else probably opened up. I can't bad. remember what it is right but now, but is, I still haven't seen it. Everyone I talk to talks about how it's a big steaming pile of crap, but that it's fun to watch. Well, Hellboy is up to fifty six million, and uh, Journey is up to forty three million. So I mean, they're both doing all right business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all right. So Hancock is number three. Damn, I, I reversed it there. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I'm, I, I spoiled the surprise, it's but there good, it is. But it's Hancock. It is. And everybody knows Hancock ain't going anywhere for a while. Yeah, no, Han- no, no. It's, 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 and it, it, it had a, you know, again, another, we've got three superhero movies in the top five, dude. Whoever thought we would see the day where the top five would be just completely run by superhero movies. Who thought we would see a summer that would be run by superhero movies you like this? This, yeah, is this is insane. This is the thing. This is the thing. It's craziness. I, I've taken so much crap from you guys. For, for what? For li- liking or loving most of the, the big blockbusters that have come out this summer. Because you orgasm with every because big movie that comes such out. such a great summer. Dude, this summer, I was thinking about it today. This summer is this generation's 1982. 
what was happening in 1982? 1982 was the genre year. It was the year that all this incredible genre came out. We got stuff like Blade Runner. We got uh, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. We got E.T. We got Tron. We got... Uh, yeah, was Tron that same year? Yeah, Tron was that same year. We got like little crappy fun things like Krull. We got really terrible genre that's still fun. And, and see, you are like, so King right. The Winged is... Serpent and, uh, and uh, Megaforce. Well, see, that's what I'm telling you. Words. But no, 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 that no, no, is this... what happened in this year. We have some good movies that are, that are good and, and, and but, they deserve to make the money. And there's some money that there are some movies that are just making money because they are well, released at the right time and have the right ingredients. I'm, I'm not arguing that, but what I'm saying is we've had such a great year quality wise in terms of the type of genre films we've got. Even even though you guys are fair to Midland on a few of these films, yeah. there's yeah. easily six or seven movies that have come out this summer that you're still going to watch two, three years from now. What summer can we say that about since, what, 1999? 99 was the last time we had a halfway decent summer. This is the first time since 82 that we've had tons of genre films come out. I'm sure Not, I can oh, find 99 something. Was, 99 was Iron Giant, Matrix. Tarzan. Uh, uh, well, if, I, 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 I love Tarzan. You, I, I know that's, I know that's uh, crazy, I, but I, I loved I, it. I was also going to say 99 was, uh, fight was Club. Matrix, Iron, yeah, Fight Club, Iron Giant, uh, Sixth Sense, Blair Witch. I think even 99 was, uh, American Beauty. American, 99 also had, uh, yeah, what, Requiem for a Dream? Did, did no, they, no, no, no. Was that, was that, was, that, that was, was that 2000? Okay, so yeah. I'm off but, by but you. This but this is but, the first year since 82. But, that uh, had such a strong genre. Well, something offering. like Hancock, like I said, Hancock was just, I think that is not that great of a movie. I think the first half is great and the second half is okay, but it's a Will Smith movie, Fourth of July, and it's and it's I've got seen special it twice effects already. And I'm um, probably going to own it on DVD. I well, love that's you. Of it. I'm just saying. I know, See, that's not no. That's you loving things. That's you. I'm loving. You, you, you were just full what? of love. I you, love movies, and I love that this summer. You like a was dog. The best summer we've had in this generation. The summer compared to you, you were like a dog with a heart on and a room full of legs. You just gonna hump anything that just, no, that's, <laughs> just feels oh, that's you. so not true. There's been you so, love all no, that shit. No, I don't love because if I did, then I'd love many other things that we will get into later. One of which is on the list today. Um, okay, well, let's go to number two then. Number two, speaking of the devil, Mama Mia. Based on the comic book, Mama Mia. Based on the comic, <laughs> Mama Mia, uh, by Frank Miller, who of course hates women. Um, um, no, Mama so Mia. Is this movie? No, oh man, we didn't even do. I, I'm getting up a review for this. Uh, I wish we all could have recorded one because I'll. Exp- well, I'm getting that later. You say you wish we all could, but let's be honest. Only two of us saw well, this. Well, uh, yeah, no, that's true, and I don't, wouldn't push this on anybody. No, 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 uh, no, no. Leon and Cyrus, they they were fucking neat. On this shit, they they were supposed to show up too, and they didn't. They, we saved seats for them, and they did not show now, up. I uh, mm-hmm. now I will say that I like a lot of this movie. Well, okay, let me for those who uh, we haven't done a review, so I'll just say uh, Mamma Mia is based on the stage play. What was it, ninety nine when it came out? Oh, I, have, uh, I think dude. it was ninety nine, and it made seriously. It's made uh, like two billion dollars. No kidding. Mm-hmm. It, since its release, and it's it's based That's all on ABBA hard songs. To do when it costs ninety to two hundred bucks to see the thing per person. Who pays that kind of money people to see this shit? People in New York City, mm, people in New York City, and people who visit New here. York City. Uh, I haven't paid to see this, so you ain't got to worry about me. And no, you got in for free, and so no, well, I saw the movie. I yeah, didn't see the stage is, play. The thing is, is I was looking forward to this because I grew up on ABBA music. My mother loved ABBA, so I I know oh, oh. ABBA Gold inside and out. So I was like, you know what? I could like this. And I've been known to like musicals. And there's parts of this that I really liked, but there's parts that I really hated. Well, and, like the middle, <laughs> like all well, of it, except well, for the beginning. The, the every moment where somebody where the like in the first act, when all the girls keep showing up, whether young or old, and they keep squealing at the top of their lungs, <laughs> there were dogs miles away that began howling <laughs> at the sound <laughs> of that. Bitch, shut up. Yeah, no, no uh, it, and and the weirdest fucking thing was the fact that they every bit of this movie was recorded in ADR, which for those of you that isn't don't know what yeah, that they, is. Yeah, they recorded in in post. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they did it in post production. They re-recorded all their lines. It sounds like one of those old bad dubbed movies from Italy in the sixties and seventies. No, instead of it's a new bad dubbed movie, let me tell you something. What I didn't like about this movie, uh, you talk about ABBA. There's People who I talked to who kept giving me that reason. 
Oh, I love ABBA. Well, you hear ABBA fucking everywhere, man. I was sitting in Denny's that night after I got through with the movie and an ABBA song came on. I said, you can't, I'm, I'm not even lying. I said, you cannot escape this shit. This movie's riding off the popularity of fucking ABBA, mu- uh, uh, ABBA music. And yeah. then on top of that, oh, I put that in a review too that, uh, the, me and co-host did that the squealing. I was like, every woman is in this movie that that dialogue is. <laughs> I was like, I can't take this shit. And on top of that, dude, this is a musical, man. Now, how can you have a musical and have people in there who cannot sing Pierce Brosnan? Well, now that's the can, weird thing. Now, this what the is, fuck? What the fuck? I'll tell you what the fuck. It was. That's what's so weird about this movie is the director thought it would be cool to make a musical with people where they would occasionally be off key or they would be, you know, they wouldn't have the ability to sing because it was they wanted it to be a more realistic musical and that's that really, makes it awkward at times because you, you're just like why are you singing badly and intentionally singing badly? well i tell you there, there were other women in that movie who they were singing badly but they knew it and they were grinning and they were like and they, and they come on yeah. they'd be like uh you know take a chance on me and then, then they would have pierce brosman wait, who was sitting wait, up there wait, why were you channeling ethel merman because i don't know <laughs> hello if my you, baby if oh. you need me let me know and i'll be around <laughs> if you got no place to go and you're feeling down well they did have that one woman who did remind me very much of oh, ethel merman so God. i was doing that very i was doing it on purpose oh, she did a very God. bad ethel merman but but the uh but and we had to see these no. these 80 year old women in swimsuit oh man jesus christ and then, and then but pierce brosnan he had this look on his on his face like i'm gonna sing my ass off and i know i can sing and he sat up there since you're gone he was doing that whole that like that commercial like uh what was it uh is it the butt light commercial where it's like uh, uh the guy comes in he's like i don't watch tv dude I have no it's idea. radio too where they uh listen to the radio dude. okay and i have had computer they had these, heard these things are called ipods i have that too you know i got about five of them you want one and, and, and yet <laughs> uh no it's it, they had those those butt light commercials where they where the guy comes in he's like oh mr so-and-so oh, 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 like that, that the uh uh mr here's to you mr Corey coleman king of the uh radio t- the internet radio show you yeah know. king of mr bringing- internet radio show exactly here's to you Carlisle, Mr. I love every summer movie. He loves every goddamn movie, no matter how bad. Exactly. Didn't pay for a thing. And he got it for free. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> that's what Pierce Brosnan reminded me of, except he was like, damn, I'm good. You can tell he was looking at things like, damn, dog, what do you think? Can I, is that good? And everybody was probably scared to tell him, no, fuck, no, I ain't good. No, no, this, that was intentional. It was, this was not people singing badly and not knowing it. That was part of what they were going for, and I thought it was a very weird choice. I yeah. saw what they were doing, but it's one of those things that reminds you, this is why we make sure everyone who's in these movies can actually sing. You know, it's it's one of those things that it's like, oh, yeah, everybody can sing until you see one where they can't, and then you're like, <laughs> shit, please, can you bring back the people? Can, can, yeah. can we get Rihanna in here for a moment? Because... Uh, <laughs> I don't care if the bitch can't act. I, 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 I want to hear somebody who knows how to sing. Please. Oh man, yeah, no, it was, it was, dude. The movie was painful to me, and uh, I, I, I was nice enough to even say that the only saving grace to me is exactly what you said. It looked like they were having fun. These people, they didn't even have the choreography good in this movie. I like well, no, and that again. That was intentional. Now I love the final act of this film. I thought the third act was everything it should be. I thought it was adorable. I thought it was sweet. I went home singing ABBA songs, but the middle was. You do painful. that anyway. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's what I call Tuesday. You leave here doing it. Although, I've got to say, dude, that, oh, I, want, I hated that audience. How bad was that audience that we saw that with? Were they, were they that bad? Oh, my God. I had this monosyllabic woman who was sitting behind me with this big ball that had all these shiny lights in it. And she kept shooting the lights in my eyes. And it was just like driving me nuts. And by the third time she did it, I turned around and I said, could you please turn that off? Oh, why is it bothering you? And I'm like, yeah, you've shot it in my eyes like three times. What was and she using? What it was this big like ball that's filled with lights that you. Why would she bring like, that into the movie? Because she was a moron. Let me let me continue. Because what would that? What then happened? Is she turned it off and then she thought she was cute and turned it back on again like I wouldn't notice. I would have picked that shit up and played dodgeball with her fucking and then face. The, move, the lights go down and she's still playing with it. The, the guy, the guy Chris, who was running the screening, had to come up and tell her to turn it off. And then this woman proceeded to laugh 
and clap and stomp her feet every time someone so much as slipped on a wet board or oh, made a silly face, I think which that, this yeah. film is filled with. You know who I'm talking about now, don't you? Yes, I do. Could, I know exactly. right fucking behind me. I didn't know she brought in a fucking glow ball. But oh, yeah. She, no, she had a fucking glow ball. I was going to rip her face fucking throw that out. is I'm the so most pissed. annoying woman in the world man because she was back there not only was she laughing at everything but she was the kind of woman that would say something every time somebody somebody yeah. says something funny yeah oh look they fail and like i bitch i see i got eyes and the thing I'm is watching the same fucking movie the stuff are? that wasn't funny <laughs> Like, like the, the stuff movie? where it was somebody would like, you know, they're in the middle of a dance scene and they kind of slip on a wet board and make a funny face for half a second and go on with what they're doing. And she's like, <laughs> you, you, that was awesome. <laughs> was, oh, my God. Oh, that's fucking I country. shoot that's... you in the fucking face. That's the oh one I'm talking God. about. That's the woman. That, that was her second outing to see a movie that year. And she uh, this helped year. the film make uh, $27 million. Hearing a bunch of other fucking idiots like her. Anyway, $27 and so million. That's the top five. So, no. You know, I, 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 wait, but wait a minute. There's more. No, no. The, what else? What else could? Oh, wait. That's right. We forgot to talk about number seven, space chips. Oh, oh space chips did come in at number seven. You know, people got mad at us last week because we forgot Meat Dave because it wasn't in the top five. Forget Meat Dave. We didn't see Meat Dave. They didn't show it to us. We didn't even know it was fucking opening. It just kind of went. Hey, here's Meat Dave, and it was. I I didn't find out until after last week's a couple of cold ones that Meat Dave had come out. I admit to bring it up. Messaged me going, "When are you going to do a Meat Dave review?" And I'm like, "When did that come out?" Fuck. Well, th- I mean, thank you for mentioning Space Chimps because last week I meant to bring up Meet Dave, not making it into the top five, even, but it had been released last week. Yeah, movie didn't do that well. In yeah. fact, well, yeah. gee, mm-hmm. when you don't show it to critics and just kind of dump it out there when, yeah. when critics can't stop talking about whatever's out. I the, mean, come on. The movie's a bomb. How was Space Chimp supposed to make any money this weekend when all anyone could talk about was Mamma Mia? And, um, <laughs> okay, so, let's cut the bullshit and get to get dude, to the wait, real wait, we shit have here. To say okay, it. yeah, on. I know. Everybody out there knows fucking Dark Knight came out this week. Every single one of them went and saw it, unless there's some sad, pathetic loser with no life or something like kids. And those poor are, people are, you the are sitting at home right now, going, "I wanted to see Dark Knight this weekend, and I'm the only one in America not to." Actually, there are a lot of people in America who still have not seen it because well, that only- shit's so. Out. Well, only 20 million people yeah, saw it, is, it this it's, weekend. It, it's, wow. uh, only 8% of America went out to see a dark night. Tw- 20 million people plus an additional 135 million. So num- I'll do it for you. Number one. No, 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 no. no, no. I actually I saw the uh, – no, no the, about 20.94 Oh, you're talking about opening – wait, like, saw it no, this weekend. Uh, but well, this movie has grossed like a hundred and fifty five million dollars. Hundred and fifty five million dollars. Beat, beat Spider Man Spider Man three. That record was held by Spider Man yep. three and it beat that. Yep. And now for a three day weekend, exactly it is the highest grossing non holiday weekend of all time. And I knew that shit was gonna happen. Now, now I ain't gonna pull the shit that you do on me every week talking about and I'm gonna give you a big heaping bowl of now, crow. I, no, I was actually gonna bring this up. I was uh now, I was very cautious about this because everyone's like, oh, it's going to be the biggest movie this summer. It's like, no, it's not. Why not? Well, because every time one of DC's movies comes out, we get all excited. Go, oh, my God, it's going to be the biggest movie this summer. When the first Batman came out, we're like, oh, my God, this is going to be so huge. It's going to be awesome. It made $49 million its opening weekend. It was the first movie, though. It was three, the first movie. Three years ago, Batman Begins made a hundred. It made. Forty nine million, and all told, it made two hundred five million. So I was that's, concerned. Yeah, that's worldwide, though. I think. No, no, no. Is worldwide, it, it made three hundred million. Yeah. Million. Uh, but so I was like, I was being cautious because I'm like, you know what? I want this. I wanted it to be the biggest movie this summer because there's nothing more than I want to see than a real, true master craftsman director handling mature material and uh, mature comic book material and selling it to American audiences and have that beat the crap out of any big budget spectacle that comes out this summer. That's what I wanted well, to see, but I was so terrified that it wouldn't. I'm just happy that it beat Spider-Man 3, a movie I did not think deserved Neither that of title. Us did. Man, mean, me, just... people, people think, see, I, you guys didn't call me up to come to that review, and that was one of those times where you're like, oh, we don't need Carlisle, and, and then you get ganged up on by, by me Leon and and Cyrus that that who, is who the had one done where they drugs that week apparently they, they you talking they about getting ganged it. up they were mad I mean yeah. the time when I talked they're to they're the only two people in the country that like that fucking movie <laughs> well there's, there's a bunch of thirteen year olds too that love it but they, but the day that Leon and talked and I talked about it and at the time I was 
I probably was just like a little more persistent in my opinion, because I thought it was inconsistent with a lot of Leon's reviews. I mean, everything that he complains about in a lot of other movies was in this movie. Yeah. And the thing is, is I loved this movie, loved it, loved it, loved it up until the big black suit turn. And you could tell that that was the point where Sam Raimi no longer gave a shit about exactly. But when I told Leon, I said, man, because he he asked me, say, so what'd you think? And I guess he thought I was going to say I loved it. And I was like, uh, I thought it was just all right, man. I like watching it. I don't, I don't think it's a good movie. He looked at me. He's like, I mean, you should have seen the hurt on his face. He was crushed. You see, he said to me. I knew you were going to say that. I was like, wow, are you, Leon, is that a tear? Well, when, did, <laughs> when did we get married? What the exactly. hell was that about? <laughs> And doing the review, they were just, I mean, they got gay. I'm no, not lying I about know, that. Dude, Le- I Leon, was, Leon I looked at Cyrus. And, and, and yeah. I'm like, this is the one time Corey fucking needed me and he and didn't call Leon me Leon Leon looked, Cyr- looked at Cyrus and he said, I could just kiss you right now. And you could tell he meant it. And I was like, Jesus Christ, these fools are gay for each other. For this moment, my, Spider-Man made them gay. Spider-Man totally made them gay, and that movie sucked ass. But this movie, oh my God, how good is this movie? Oh, man, this movie's brilliant. This movie's absolutely brilliant. I, I, the hype that I heard for it, even I had to remove myself and say, I cannot buy into this anymore. There's you know, people just riding, in, riding the hype and saying that it's good because they feel like they have to. And I went to see it, and I was like, nope, everything you know, they said. It's, it's one of those movies that everybody hypes it up. I, 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 had, I had my written review online. And I got inundated with email after email going, you're overhyping the movie, dude. You're going to ruin it for me. There's no way I can enjoy it. There's no way this movie is this good. No way. No fucking way. You guys are just overhyping. Blah, 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 blah. And then Friday came and I started getting a trickle of emails and going, dude, I, I saw it. You, oh my God. Holy crap. You, you can't oversell this movie. This movie is just as good as everybody says. Well, I kept getting the emails of people saying... I'm so glad that you love this. I really am glad that you loved it, but I, I, I don't see anymore. Don't, 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 don't even look at me. Don't look at me because I don't want to know anything don't about know, this. And I, I even had one guy where we mentioned two faces in the movie and he's like, man, that could be a spoiler. I'm like, come on, give me a fucking yeah, break, were, man. There I was were like, people who screamed about the fact yeah. that two faces in the movie. Well, they, that, but that, that, that that you, gonna, you know that he's in the movie just because no, no, we mentioned two faces. Some people have stayed like I, people kept asking me, there's a reason why I didn't write a lot of stuff about Batman. Uh, you know, people are like, why didn't you do blogs about it? Why, why didn't you talk about all the trailers? I've seen one trailer to The Dark Knight. I saw the one that, that was attached to uh, uh, I Am Legend when it came out. I avoided everything else because I my ass was in the seat. Well, I didn't yeah. need to be shown a frame of that film. Well, listen, I'm just thinking saying. that there's so much that was coming about this movie. There's no way you can avoid every detail. And if you do... Don't. Why would you even peek at something like what we did? If the, all this time you avoided l- l- knowing that Two Faces in the movie, but all of a sudden you watch our review, that's your fault, man. I mean, no, why would you no, even take I, that next step? No, that's, I mean, there's, there's a certain there's a certain bit to that, but really, that was one of those things where it's like, dude, you click on the IMDb page and it says Harvey Dent slash Two Face. Exactly. I if mean, if you yeah. know anything about Batman, you know that. Harvey Dent becomes Two Face, exactly, and there's no reason to put Harvey Dent in the movie as a main character unless you're going to make him Two Face. Because look at what they fucking did last time. I mean, they had the perfect person for Harvey Dent, and then they went what, Billy D. Williams. Billy D. Williams, exactly. Dude, how cool would have a Billy D. Williams Two Face have been? Exactly. And they decided, no, 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 no. We really want to go with someone else. We're going to change who Harvey Dent was because we want a bigger star. And so that's when they went with uh, God oh Tommy Lee, Tommy Lee Jones. But th- those movies don't even exist to me. Uh, Not anymore. Both Not of. This. I mean, at the time when when Batman Forever came out, I said a lot of people they liked that movie. No, now I they never liked that. Th- one. They the, a lot of people let that one slide, and then it was Batman and Robin that they said sucked. But I told people you know like, look, to that, be perfectly well, honest, well, well, hold on. I mean, I'm just saying Batman Forever was a precursor to what was to what Batman and Robin was going to be, and I told people that is not that good of a movie. Uh, the, you know, the thing is, I, there was never a Batman film <clears throat> until Batman Begins that I liked when I walked out of the theater. Now, the original Batman, I grew to love after the fourth time I saw it. Like <laughs> you once, After the fourth time you saw it in the theater? No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. I only saw it twice in the theater. Um, uh, it was one of the, it was like I was watching it on HBO, uh, and I was like, oh, I guess I'll watch this. I saw it on video, because there were things I loved about it. I really wanted to like it, but I just, I, I was always disappointed with it. And I watched it, and I could finally separate myself from the Batman in the comic and see this as its own thing and go, oh, you know, okay, I dig this as a separate story of Batman. I can dig this. But that's not what Christopher Nolan did. Christopher Nolan, made, he, he remade Batman. He remade Batman in the same way that um, 
that Richard Donner remade Superman with the original Superman and Superman 2. Yeah. Like he, Christopher Nolan has made the definitive Batman. In 30 years, people are going to be talking about this theatrical version of the Batman. And unless something weird has happened, it's going to be the best. Well, I, I'd have to admit, I'm one of those people, I've told people this over and over again. I never was overjoyed with the first Batman. I thought yep. that, I think today, I even, back then I looked at it and I, and I was like, wow, the Joker's really cool. And they saw that movie on that character. But if you look at that movie, and this is why I never saw it twice in the theater. I just said, man, the script sucks. The story is just not that good. Now, I like the first one. Now, now, just an hour ago, I just got done watching Batman Begins again. I threw that in on my big screen and decided to watch it again. Kick back on my couch with a friend and watch the movie. Um, and uh, I was like, wow. This is so not nearly as awesome as The Dark Knight is. No, it's not. I was just, I, I'm watching it and I'm watching how they do certain things. I'm like, they don't even mention some of this stuff in The Dark Knight. Like, there's none of this. And, and I'm so glad there was none of this because this stuff is, this, this was a really great prequel to the best comic book. Well, movie it was not. There's a lot of stuff that they changed in there. <clears throat> it doesn't even look like, the, the, like Batman Begins. And by the way, before people jump on me, uh, I do recognize Tim Burton's legacy that he left with Batman. Oh, I just stop no, it. No, stop no, no, wait, wait, no. Let me finish, let me, dude. Let me finish, man. No, I to let <laughs> I, no, no I will. Well, I will finish. I, I, the, Batman, the first Batman is Tim Burton. Just did a great job at giving people the mood that they wanted. That whole thing with Goth and Art Deco. When I love the art direction, but to, the, the, he, he even he even admitted like I don't know anything about this character. He so, took I, a brilliant I, script. In fact, Batman. I have talked to a number of directors. And list, uh, you know, sat in on conversations where a number of directors always go back to Batman. They always go back to the Tim Burton '89 Batman as the script that got fucked over by a pretentious director. Because if you read the original script for Batman, the one that they were going into the project with, it was genius. To this day, people have sat down and going, "Oh my God, what a great film!" And only a quarter of that survived Tim Burton. What Tim was the Bur rest of it like? I, I, you know what? I haven't read it. It's it's one of those things that I'm supposed to have read, but everybody always fucking talks about well, it. Well, even and some of that art direction goes to Anton first, the guy who did a lot of the artwork for it. So sure. I just I just think it it it, it really did create a lot. It created a theme it was, for it Batman. Was an it created interesting well, version. It, well, it was it was good. It was, no, it was it's a very good it is a very good artistic movie. But as far as a script goes, it's not a it's not a good plot. And so. you know, it it's really not. And uh, to top it off, one of the things I always hated about the Batman films always hated was they always killed the fucking villains. That's the biggest disappointment Every for me. Every movie, it's like, we got to kill them. Why? Because they're a big name star and they won't come back. Who cares? Fucking don't kill them. Batman didn't kill them. That was the point to exactly. Batman. He refused blatantly. And, and that's one of those things where they kind of, in, in Batman Begins, where it's just a little annoying, where it's like, I, I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. <laughs> And then I fly out of the back of the subway car and let Rachel Ghoul go to his death. It's like, but that's you don't, not Batman. But you don't know for sure still no, if you don't, they Because he's yeah. Rachel Ghoul. Exactly. You know? I mean, he's, he's a fucking badass and he's fucking immortal. But still, point mm. is, Batman wouldn't do that. And I was kind of like, eh, in this movie. Well, I, I don't even want to spoil anything. No, man, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about spoilers. In this movie, they have Batman be 